And just for the record, Savannah said, well, you don't really have any depth. <laughs> Just shows you she didn't know me. Okay, well, you know what? Yeah. I was wrong. Chase actually showed some depth today. And anyone... Can we, can we all clap right now? <laughs> Savannah just said she was wrong, and we got it on camera. And Something you will too. came over you today. No, Savannah, this has been, this has been here. You just, you just ignored it. <laughs> Welcome back to Unlocked, guys. So I finally have Chase on with me. Yeah. Welcome. It took long enough. <laughs> Okay, well, you and I have been in like a weird place with each other. Savannah, so I, I have I haven't been in a weird place. Chase, yes, you have. You've been in a very weird place. You're not friendly. <laughs> is this a re is this a scripted podcast or is this <laughs> no. you control the narrative? No, it's not. Okay. Not at all. Okay. I haven't had an issue with you. Don't have an issue with you. I'm just not gonna let someone be mean. No, we both. You have to. We've both been in weird places with everything we've got going on in our life for sure like we haven't been in the best place emotionally and therefore i think it goes back to that saying that like you take out what you like you take out on the people you love the you take out your frustrations or your anger on the people you love the most because you know you, you do, can get yeah, away yeah you with definitely it. do that chase <laughs> you do and i mean it's I don't know if, I mean, it is a bad thing, but I mean, you know that we're not going anywhere. Yeah. But everybody goes through stuff. But you do too. I do. Yeah, you do yeah. too. And you can say some hateful stuff. Yeah, I can. I'm not proud of it, but. <laughs> like you can. And it's just like, come on. Like, yeah. we both need to be better at communicating, I feel like, with each other. Yeah, because whenever you and I start either getting off on a bad foot or get into an argument or something like that we savannah's not going to reach out no or apologize that's and not true i'm the exact same way <laughs> so it's just like okay we'll just let time pass and eventually somebody's gonna cave no we both need to be better at like actually admitting our faults Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're terrible at it. So don't look at me like I'm not. I know. One. I mean, obviously, no one's perfect. I know I have tons of flaws. I have a few less. <laughs> I, I don't have to say anything else. I can leave it right there. I don't have to say anything else. I'm messing with you. I've got a ton. I've got a ton. That's for sure. But it was actually I want to touch on. It was pretty good whenever because Aaron was like, what are y'all going to talk about? And I was mm -hmm. like, oh, we'll just figure it out as we go. And what was it that you said about this being? Yeah, I mean, this is honestly the first podcast or any type of filming setup that I've ever done where I didn't have to like put on for the camera. I didn't, didn't have stuff to plug or stuff to talk about like that was promoting something. And like I can, I mean, it's just me and you. Yeah. So I, there's no one else behind us telling us what to do or, or what to say. And that's the first time, this is the first time I've ever been in a situation like this where I, tons of people are going to see it, but I can actually be myself and yeah, you know, it is. It's because like during the show, when we had interviews, it was, we, we were talking about things that we had filmed or there were cues, there were specific questions being asked that we kind of knew what the answers were going into it well f filming is it was it's our job and to a difference is like you just said with the show like we're so used to having to look at the camera when yeah. we're answering a question but for like the podcast setup it's we're having a conversation with each other and the mm -hmm. cameras are just watching in on it so we don't have to look at them so i don't have to look at it and <laughs> deliver my point <laughs> no yeah, no, but I mean, like filming, obviously, like that is our job. And I don't think a lot of people understand that. Yeah. They think, oh, that's just what they do. Like, no, that's not what we do every single day. Yeah, we don't show up with 100 people to film what we're doing. <laughs> like, that's just not, that's not how it works. Like, it's a business. It's a job. And I'm very thankful for it. But I mean, this is definitely different. No, 100%. This is definitely different. And we have more of a voice. That's been the biggest thing when I started this podcast was, that's where I've kind of had my struggles too of maybe having too much of a voice or trying to prove too much of a point because mm -hmm. for 10 years we haven't had a voice and we've had these images created of us that aren't 110% truly us. Well, they're characters. Yeah, they're characters. Yeah. And it's, yeah, sure, there's some truth to it, some reality, but it's not all 110% factual. 
And that's the hardest part now. I'd say it's 90% kind of <laughs> put situational putting you in, having to do it. And then 10% comes from what is actually going on, which that 10% is very impactful. But yeah. It now just, this is different. It, yeah, it's very different. Mm-hmm. And for once now we're in control of what we say, what we do, how it gets put out to the public. And mm-hmm. there is something that's so kind of liberating about that and being able, and too, there's been some stuff that I've said on here that people haven't liked and that have, well aware. <laughs> you know, like bit me in the butt, but that's part of being in control of my story it's there's going to be some stuff that upsets people and you know i there was a comment that i read and it was a review like someone went and edited their review because Mm -hmm. i had spoken about carrie lake who was running for governor um of was it arizona i think that that was the thing it was like i wasn't even really speaking necessarily truly Like, I wasn't speaking about what she stood for. Mm -hmm. I was just saying that as a woman, like, she's running for governor. That's a huge, huge thing. But also how she switched, has switched over the years back and forth between Democrat, Republican, Democrat, Republican, based on circumstances, situations, whatever it may be, and how interesting it would be to have a conversation with her, Mm -hmm. to try to understand, gain knowledge, and for a woman to have, be in a place of such power... And that's where I was coming from. And then someone left a comment, like a review, and was like, I love Savannah so much, blah, blah, blah. And then went back and reviewed it, like edited it, and was like, I'm unfollowing this podcast. I can't, I cannot believe that you spoke about Carrie Lake, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, first off, I never once have said, am I Democrat? Am I Republican? Am I, I've never drawn my line in the sand Mm. i've just wanted to gain knowledge from different points of view yeah and that's part of when we get to tell our own story we're gonna have people that hate us people that love us well we know we know some people hate us Uh, we know that for sure we know that for sure but i mean i think with everything that we are going through and have been going through for the the last several years, I mean, and especially the last few months, is that I have gotten to a point where I just do not care what yeah. anybody else's opinion of me is. That's none of my business. I don't care. So like whenever someone's gonna comment or something like that, I'm not reading it. I want you to comment. I want you to comment. <laughs> Talk your shit. Do it. But it's not gonna bother me. And I think that's what you need to get to because you're so like you're like really a great example for young women that it's such like an inspiring message for you and for everybody. Cause like you have created things and you have a successful business and you're continuing to work and you have a platform and you're not being shy of who you are and you shouldn't. And I don't think you should give two shits what anybody (laughs) thinks about you because you know who you are. Your family knows who you are. So I know. And that's the hard part. And that's where we're different because I do. I read everything so that I can, in a way, I feel like, so it's like I'm mentally prepared for if something bad is said or I hear something bad, it's like, oh, I've already heard that. So it's fine. Mm -hmm. So it's, I don't know if I read it just so I'm prepared and just like know what people are saying Mm -hmm. or, and to how I can fix it, which is also hard because I want to try to fix it all. When in reality, there are certain people to where it's, I have to get to a point where it's like, I don't that's It's not going to make or break me if you listen to me or not. Yeah. Well, I mean, you need to do it for you and not for anybody else. Yeah. And too, I will say like, obviously I've had this podcast. The podcast started a little bit before Everything with mom and dad started happening with the sentencing, all that. Mm -hmm. And so people have heard from me and my point of view and how I'm doing. They've heard from mom. They've heard from dad. They've heard from everybody in the family. (laughs) Now they've heard from Grayson. Mm -hmm. And you haven't really said anything. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think that... I don't owe anybody an explanation. I don't owe the public an explanation. I don't need to explain how I feel to anybody um, other than like the people that I care and I love about 
or the people that I care about and that, that I love. Um, obviously, what we've been going through is hell. Mm-hmm. It is a terrible, terrible situation. Um, but I have to try to find the good, even in the darkest time. And I feel like throughout everything that we have been going through, it has made me appreciate things that I did not appreciate as much in the past. It's made me do a lot of reflecting and, and just kind of figuring out who I am as a man, who I, who I am now as a man and who I want to be in 10 years and then 10 years from there and 10 years from there. Yeah. Um, and I think that the one thing that I've come to the conclusion that I'm not going to worry about what everybody else, all the world is thinking and saying about me. I have to make sure that I'm good so I can be good for Emmy. I have to make sure that Emmy's good. I have to make sure that my family is good emotionally and that I am in a place emotionally where I can be there for my loved ones. And so that's why I haven't really said anything on Instagram or anything like that, because I just don't, I feel like I've been doing the work behind the scenes and that's going to pay off. And then I'll let you let my actions speak for yeah. what needs to be said. But I mean, but when it comes to how, when it comes to how you're dealing with everything, because I feel like we're very different in that aspect. Mm-hmm. And I think part of Part of my issue with the whole thing is, I mean, I think I said it on my last podcast with Grayson was like, I've allowed pride and ego and all these things to get involved to where it's like, maybe I think my way is the best way. Or I think like, I don't give people a chance to grieve the situation, how they do. Mm -hmm. I look at how I do it as like, well, this is how you need to do it. When Mm -hmm. in reality, that's not true. And I think part of my, I don't know, part of the riff you and I've had, it's like an un, it's not that we're like at each other's throats by any means. Like Mm -hmm. we're there for each other. We know that we work together. We, you know, we have a business together. Yeah. Yeah. We're siblings. Like we love each other. Mm -hmm. There's just an unspoken tension there and I think for me it comes from seeing you I'm not saying move on with your life because mom and dad have both said dad said I don't want you to stop living your life like I want you to continue to progress and do the things you want to do and grow and all those things Mm -hmm. and you're doing that when it comes to you and Emmy and all the and for me I think because I don't have that And there's part of me that feels guilt for moving on in any way, shape or form. Yeah. I mean, I've just, I think that I went through a lot of stuff before all of this happened. Like before we were going through all this, like from, like we went on TV at such a young age and I, I didn't want to listen to what anybody had to say or anything like that. So I feel like God humbled me several years ago and brought me to my knees. And whenever I thought I had, I knew what I was doing. You know what I mean? I knew the right way and I didn't want to listen to anyone else. Unlocked with Savannah Chrisley is sponsored by BetterHelp. This holiday season, do something special for a person in your life. You give yourself a gift to raise your spirits and not just for the day. The holidays can be a really, really tough time between managing family dynamics racing from thing to thing, braving the cold and dark weather, and sometimes it's filled with grief. So it's normal to feel down. Having someone to talk to about how you're feeling and what you can do about it truly is a gift. Coming from someone who has a therapist, it has taught me so much. I'm learning coping skills, how to set healthy boundaries, self-empowerment, and dealing with so much trauma. So I encourage you to give yourself the gift of BetterHelp. As the world's largest therapy service, BetterHelp has matched 3 million people with professionally licensed and vetted therapists, 100% online. Plus, it's affordable. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to match with a therapist. And if things aren't clicking, you can easily switch to a new therapist at any time. It couldn't be simpler. No waiting rooms, no traffic, no endless searching for the right therapist. 
Learn more and save 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash Savannah. Again, that's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Savannah, S-A-V-A-N-N-A-H, BetterHelp. When you say that you were humbled by it, what exactly? Because there was a lot that was hit from the cameras. Oh, for sure. Yeah. And honestly, if we would have filmed what was actually going on, we probably would have been way bigger than what yeah. we are. Yeah. But um, like going I mean, into, just, the, like we've said before, going into the drinking, going into the partying, the yeah. partying, like explain that because that's not something that anyone saw. And we got so good at we beat each other's throats. You would have come in after being up all night and tried mm-hmm. to film yeah. and it was just people had said at times i mean i people... look like shit <laughs> <laughs> i mean it, I, I we say it was hidden but was it really hidden i mean and you know what i mean i don't i think that i just had i was so insecure with who i was yeah and obviously there's family dynamics that that factor into it as well but i mean like i think that Obviously, we came in, we started a job that n- most people don't have and started making money very quickly at a very young age. And I was just wrapped up in like trying to be somebody that I wasn't. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then. And trying to me, impress the people that really didn't matter. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I would go out and like go out to a club and we would spend thousands and thousands of dollars. And like, I I was sitting here thinking, Oh, all these people are my friends. Like I've got, so like, I've got all these friends that have got my back when in reality, like I've got about four. If that, yeah, if that, um, and I, but I mean like, that's just something that I had to go through. And like, I've always said that like, well, I haven't always said this cause obviously I went through it, but now I, now I think, I don't care who you are. Yeah. Like when it comes to once, once you mix money with alcohol and drugs or anything like that, it's, there's such a fine line that you've got to walk because it can just like that get out of control. Well, yeah. I mean, and I I definitely got out of control for sure. I mean, I was, yeah, I was definitely out of control. But and I think everything is about moderation. And some people, some people can do that, and some people can. Uh, what I have said, first off, I am never. It's not said in a judgmental way. It's not said, but I'm never an advocate for drugs for any of that because I've just, I've said to you, I'm like, oh, that it's a gateway drug. This, that, and the other. Eh. But yeah, I, also, I disagree with that. But I think it's also too with what we saw growing up as well and the effects that drugs had on a family and parents and things like that. So I think that turned me complete opposite. Now, there was a point in time to where, yeah, I sm- had smoked weed. Like well, I, I think I think weed is medicine. I really do. If it's used in the right way and if you need it, I don't know. I think that's a very touchy topic because I do feel like it could be a gateway drug because the more weed you smoke, like the more times you smoke weed, the more it takes for you to get high, and the more it, and then finally it's just going to be like, okay, well I want something that's going to give me that high quicker, and I want. Well, it's just I mean. I've just heard so many negative, like it's, it's hard. I feel like that's a weird. I mean, everybody's got their own opinion on it. It's just, that's what it yeah. is. I mean, but also when it comes to drinking, you know, I have always said, yeah, like when, whenever it comes to like drinking, I mean, like you and I drank together one time. Yeah. But I mean, that was like a different, definitely diff, like no. struggle part of my life. Like I was not in like a mental headspace to, but also to, to, we have said you though like there's some people can sit down and have a drink with dinner or two drinks with dinner and Mm. then there's some people that's like no i'm gonna have a whole bottle yeah like it's some people are capable of moderation some people aren't i think moderation is practiced i mean i don't think you can learn until you mess up but i mean 
anybody that says they're not di- a different person when they're drinking is just a liar. I yeah. mean, everybody is different. Maybe you're funnier or you're happier or you're more talkative <laughs> whenever you drink, or maybe like you're if just... you have enough to drink, like you're ready to kill somebody. Yeah. And I mean, that's where I think like weed and alcohol or drugs and alcohol. That's where I think weed is literally a medicine and alcohol. You can put, you can put five, hundred people in a room and let them smoke weed they'll be laughing getting along cutting up eating chilling you can put five people in a room with a bottle of alcohol and somebody's going to be dead okay well i don't know if that's like actual statistics i'm telling you I, <laughs> that's chase Chris. that's what i think i think well i think that i just think that alcohol there's definitely way more room for bad bad shit to happen with alcohol involved for yeah, sure 100 uh, yeah. percent. and i think that's been part of your struggle and that's the crazy part is like we've never talked i've talked about things on this podcast mm-hmm. that we never touched on on 10 seasons of a top rated tv show mm-hmm. like we never spoke about mental health we never spoke about me trying to commit suicide. We never spoke about drugs and alcohol. We, because there were just things that weren't funny. Yeah. That they didn't want to touch well, it was on. A, it's a comedy. Yeah. And so I think there's a lot that people are going to learn of your story. And because of your story, people are going to feel that they can relate and that they can, mm-hmm. because I feel like, I mean, I definitely, I just like, I've taken things too far. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, I just haven't, I'm just not like a half asser. <laughs> like, I'm, <laughs> if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. Oh, yeah. And, uh, but I mean, like, and as far as alcohol goes, like, I mean, it's You're just, way better without it in your life. I, yeah. Completely I, different I definitely, I definitely agree. But I mean, at the end of the day, like, I'm not saying I'm never going to drink again because I have, I mean, throughout all this stuff that we've been going through, like I've definitely been like, dude, screw this. Like I'm going to, I'm going to go like, I'm going to go have a couple beers. And, but that's when, you know, though, that's what I have said on my podcast is when you're drinking to make yourself feel different than what you feel now. Well, then why would you even, that's when, because some people are just like, whenever you're going out with a group of friends for Mm -hmm. dinner, like you're in a great mood, you're fine. Like you want to have a drink or two, whatever. Yeah. But when you're down in the dumps, that's when you can't, that's when you can't do it. No, that's when you can't because when you drink to make yourself feel any other way than what you're feeling in that moment, that's when you're going to start going down. But don't you think that any, any time you drink it, it alters your mood. It does. But if you're already in a, downward spiral and depression Mm -hmm. alcohol is a depressant yeah for sure so i don't i don't think i suffer from depression i think i suffer i have definitely terrible anxiety but i think that i always just you sometimes yeah i kind of agree with that because sometimes it's like you build your own little alternate universe and that's what you live in what do you mean (laughs) I don't like, think so. Like I just live. refuse to live in a constant state of negativity. I get it. But when our life is nothing but negative, it's some, it like a point in time, you have to realize that that's what it is. I don't think, I mean, you can uh, address like the negativity. Obviously there's going to be negative things to happen in life. But I mean, like I was literally talking to one of my friends yesterday and it was, we were having a conversation about like depression and anxiety and stuff like that. But then he lit, he asked me, he said, well, dude, like you can't get up and do the same stuff every single day and expect a different result. Right? Like you can't, like if you, you gotta get up and work at your mental health, you've got to yeah. put in work, you got to do things that are going to, naturally help you blow off some steam and put you like give you some mental clarity yeah so and that's what i'm working on is just being the best version of myself and i'm not saying like i'm not gonna mess up again because i know i am yeah i'm not saying that i'm never gonna drink again because i I might i probably will but my goal is even if i do that to do to not 
hurt the people that I love. You know what I mean? And that's a hard part. It's it's, like, it is. It's such a, it's, it's a very tough, very difficult thing to do. When you see that your actions are hurting the people that you love, mm -hmm. that's, that's when it's a problem. That's when it's a problem. And that's when it gets even harder sometimes to quit doing what you're doing because you're like, well, I've already hurt them. So screw it. You know? Yeah. But I mean, I don't, I don't, I'm, I don't view it. Like I'm not like saying, Oh, I've already done it. I'm just going to do it again. Like, no, like, no, I know. I'm just saying when you realize, all right, I've hurt all these people. I feel like the guilt kicks in and then you're just like, well, there's nothing I can do to fix it. So you're not saying you just yeah, like yeah, as no, a person in yeah, general, it's sure. easier. It's harder to change at certain points in time. Yeah, for sure. And like in my darkest days, I mean, I was not 18 or 19, 20, 21 years old, 22 years old. And I was making gr great money. And I was so that. And then I was going out and just but my mental health was so just not there. Yeah. Like I was in such a terrible place, like from an emotional, emotionally, mental, physically. emotionally, emotionally, physically, my mental health. I just was not there. And I was a shitty person to people that didn't deserve it. I was not. I mean, I've made mistakes. I've treated people in ways that I shouldn't have treated them. And I had. I feel bad about that and I've asked God to forgive me about that. But I mean, there's, I, I can't do anything about that, but try to be better. You know yeah. what I mean? So like it, when you, we talk about like drinking, like, yeah, I like, I might go have a drink, like, but my goal is to not be a shitty person anymore. And if, if I can change that fundamentally with like insight, cause I'm not a bad person, you know? No, you're like, not a bad just, person. And I think a lot of it, is just like letting go of anger and letting go of hatred that I've had for so long. And I'm, I've honestly, the only reason I've been able to, to do that and let go of some of those things is because of Emmy. Yeah. Because she's, she really has changed. She's changed my entire. It's so funny that you say that because I was this morning on my drive here. I'm like trying to figure out what I'm going to talk about with Emmy, what I'm going to talk about with you. And I called Aaron and I was following up on some stuff and I was like, I'm just trying to figure out what I need to talk about with each person and was pondering my thoughts. And I said, you know, Chase has made me realize, like I've always thought, well, you have to be good for yourself before you can be good for anyone else. That's always kind of been my mentality, but I think it wasn't until Emmy that you made any progress. And so sometimes it does take someone else it to takes someone initiate else. that change or to, I don't necessarily know if I believe anymore that you got to be good for yourself before you can be good for anyone else. I think that what it, I can only speak for myself because, and I'm not going to sit here and act like I got all the answers because I don't. <laughs> I mean, like I'm, all I know is I'm going to get up in the morning. I'm going to work hard. I'm, there's not going to be someone that's going to outwork me. And if I can stick to that and I can focus on that and focus on my relationship with God, then I'll be all right. But something switched in my life when I, Emmy and I met and once, and she and I started dating, it's like, I was so angry and I had, I didn't even really know that I was angry. I don't think I did because I had just I had been, I had felt like that for so long, yeah. like for 15 years. And when she came into my life, it's like, it brought me a level of peace that I didn't, I had never knew. And she brought me a level of peace and comfort within myself that I finally feel like, well, I don't have to prove anything to anybody. Mm -hmm. I don't, as long as I, and, and that's what she kind of made me realize is like throughout all this money and all this stuff, all the notoriety, the fame, all that, I don't think that I ever sat back and enjoyed being me well, until yeah, you were I always had her, trying to... until I had her, until she came into my life, I didn't know how to enjoy being myself without mm -hmm. trying to people please other people. And yeah. she has made me just real it's just it's, i don't know it, it's her, it, her and god but i mean she's made me just oh like see life 
in a peaceful way instead of seeing life as a constant battle and a constant fight. Yeah. Because that's the way I've always viewed life. Like, okay, I'm going to have to fight somebody today. Not physically sometimes, but <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. And she's made me realize that I don't have to do that. Yeah. And not everybody's out to get you or get something from you. And, and no, a good amount of people are, but there's some snakes out there. And that, and I think that that's where I'm able to help her as well though, because she hasn't been, been have to deal with cutthroat people. When like she and I, I were speaking literally. So I told, I'm like, I love you so much. You are so naive. Like, so she's too, just innocent. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And like, there's something to be said for that because there, when you live in a world of people constantly trying to tear you down or turn on you and it hardens you to where you're just like, well, everyone's going to screw me over. Come at me. I'll come back even harder. Mm -hmm. So there's something to be said for And I still that. have that in me. <laughs> <laughs> that is not going anywhere. So if you, if you play and you get me on a bad day, you might get it, but for the most, I mean, she has changed my life and her family has changed my life. And especially like with everything that we've been going through recently, yeah. um, obviously like Emmy's dad is sick, Yeah. but I mean, just the love and compassion that like they show as a family, um, and what they've shown to me, like I'm forever grateful for, and they've, they've changed my life in a, in a positive, in a positive way and and every day I wake up I want to be a better man for her and so I will will be the man that my kids will be proud of and yeah. I would not have I would not be able to sit here and say that say I've gotten to that place if it wasn't for her see and I love that because I do feel like and that's the thing when growth is happening I feel like in a way it pulls people apart before it sucks them back together mm -hmm. because you are in a place of growth and I'm in a place of still like anger. And, and I think that's why, like going back to what you said, you said about me, like getting, like moving forward with my life. I think that's because throughout this whole situation, you've gotten angrier and angrier and angrier and you just, you don't have to, you know? And that's what I've realized. It's like, I refuse to give them anymore they're not getting any more you're not gonna see me shed a tear i'm not shedding a tear over this anymore because i've cried all i'm crying they're not getting that from me i've put my faith in god and i have i i truly believe to my core that he will prevail and this situation is not done i mean we yeah. you and i both know that all right y'all you know how i absolutely love supporting other podcasts because if it wasn't for people supporting mine i wouldn't be where i'm at so I'm so excited to speak about Even the Rich, Whitney Houston. Whitney Houston's voice defined a generation, and even after her death, her talent remains unmatched. But her incredible successes hit a deeply private pain. Even the Rich is a podcast from Wondery that tells the jaw-dropping stories about the tumultuous lives of the world's elite from the greatest family dynasties to pop culture superstars. The newest season explores how Whitney Houston seemingly had it all. She was stunning and her voice angelic, described as a once-in-a-generation talent. Despite this, she felt trapped between worlds, black versus white, R&B versus pop, gay versus straight. She meant something different to every person and every fan. As the pressure mounted, drugs became her refuge. But soon enough, addiction took control and stole her from the world decades before her time. Even the Rich chronicles Whitney's rise to pop prominence and her infamous fall from grace, revealing the lesser known stories behind Whitney's demise. I am so excited to listen to this podcast, guys, and I really hope that you'll follow along with me so that we can maybe get to know Whitney at a deeper level and understand the struggles because I feel like when you understand someone's hardships, it helps you to understand and love them a little better. So I hope that you will follow Even the Rich wherever you get your podcast. You can listen ad-free on the Amazon Music or Wondery app. I think it's just hard for me. I think where my anger has come from is knowing the type of parents 
that we have and who they are as people. And I think the biggest thing too is like dad and I were walking, I don't know, a few weeks back and I kind of broke down, he broke down and knowing his whole life, like we said, there were things on the show that didn't get touched on. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't say what I'm about to say if dad hadn't touched on it previously, because dad has touched on it on his podcast about abuse that he suffered as a child, not from his parents, but abuse that he suffered, you know, from other people, other people. And he touched on that a little bit. And, you know, he's, kind of gone back and forth between writing a book, not writing it. And he's worked on a little bit because I've read like two different chapters and he goes into depth about the abuse. Mm -hmm. And I think for me watching, like you have someone who's suffered abuse at such a young age from the time they were four years old. Mm -hmm. And then it's now this is happening in his life. And it's like, well, when's, Why? Like, why God? Like, when is his time? Like, and that's, that's, I feel like so much anger comes from that, from like, and people not having the understanding or wanting to understand and get to know the good in people. Instead, we have all these people around that are just wanting to see the negative and wanting to say, these people did it. These people are guilty. Let's and, and don't know the facts and don't yeah. know the facts because if you would actually go and pull legal documents, you could see factual evidence and you could see all the things that went wrong. And that's where this appeals process is going to hopefully, like you said, God is going to prevail and things are going to be brought to light. Mm-hmm. But until then, we've got to put up with the negativity and we've got to. And what kills me in the world that we live in is and again i never want to get too political on my podcast because it's just i'm not looking for division i'm not looking for hatred i'm not like i want everyone to come together but you've got this whole balenciaga scandal that just happened Mm -hmm. and all of the ads that they've put out and these ads that are basically encouraging child exploitation and showing naked children with blood on them, court documents that talk about child abuse, all of these hidden messages in this ad. And you had, I'm just going to say, there was a TV personality that had the nerve to post on their Instagram story. I'm not addressing the Balenciaga scandal. We need to address the important things that are going on in this world, such as the Jen Shaw scandal and Twitter scandals. And I'm like, okay, so when now we're at a point to where money means more than a child. Well, I think the thing about it is... and. And this whole Balenciaga scandal, money, really? Money, money has always been the money's the root of all evil. Yeah, I mean, but but, but my thing is, is we've got people coming at us over things that are not true, and mm-hmm. it has to do with money in the federal government. But then you've got Balenciaga, who's out here encouraging the exploitation of children, but we're going to let that fly over. I mean, it's just disgusting. Like, there's no, beyond. there's no, there's no other way. To, and it's not. Yeah. And again, it's not Democrat. It's not Republican. It's mm-hmm. about being human and it's about caring for children. And it's to me, it's just, it's so it just irks me how well it's just it's it, there's no it's there's no secret that our the world that we live in today is going to hell in a handbasket quick yeah i mean there's no there's no moral compass for anything the only like money is what is what control money and power is what 
controls pretty much everything. And is that right? No, it's not right. Is Balenciaga wrong? 100%. They should go out of business and I will never buy anything from them ever again. And anybody that is standing by and and making an excuse for some, there's no excuse. There's yeah. no excuse for what happened. There's no excuse for this artwork that I've seen. There's no excuse. When that it's it, a it, huge corporation it's that a business. have levels and levels and levels that all of these images go through that need approval. So mm -hmm. there are multiple people's hands that are on it. And I know when people listen to this, what they're going to come back and say, Oh, you're calling out Balenciaga, but look at the scandal y'all are going through. And yeah, it's, I mean, and that's I fine because people are going to think either people are going to believe in guilt or they're going to believe in innocence. Mm -hmm. And we live in a world to where it's much easier to believe that someone is guilty than it is innocent. And we also have a system that is supposed to be innocent until proven guilty, but it's guilty until you can prove you're innocent while the government attacks you in yeah. every way they can and break the laws Yeah, to, to do this. But I mean, you said, Oh, you just said like, why about dad? Like why God? Like why? But at the end of the day, like why not? I mean, yeah. like there's so many people that, are going through hell every day. Ours is just broadcasted. Yeah. But there are people, we're not going to be the first people or the first children that they that have to go, that their parents are, have been sentenced to jail. Yeah. We're not the first people. No. We, they, they're, we're not the first family that would, will be broken up, but we do have God. We do have each other and we will get through it. Yeah. So, and that's what I said, like when speaking to Emmy was the people that I've had reach out that have gone through similar things that have dealt with the system and that have, you know, and that's one thing too, is, you know, I've read a comment of someone saying, oh, now you have these rich white people that are going to stand up against the system and how broken it is. And I feel like there have been times before where we've talked about our broken system. When it came to George Floyd and it came to some other stuff, there were parts of our system that were broken that mom and dad did speak about on their podcast. Mm -hmm. But it also... We've also been guilty of being part of the ignorance. Uh, For sure. You're not, you don't know how to speak up against something until you've been affected by it. Mm -hmm. And then once you've been affected by it, you have more knowledge and you have more pain and feeling to speak up against it. Yeah. But we have, we've been ignorant to it. We've been sheltered from a lot of it. But then now that we've been affected by it ourselves. Yeah, a hundred percent. And it, that's, I sit back, like whenever I'm sitting, like sitting, talking about it, thinking about it, it's like, there are so many people that are sitting in prison right now that are innocent people. Yeah. And just because it checked a box for a prosecutor or checked a, po uh, a box for a, a district attorney, just for them to have another asterisk by their name to put somebody away without doing the work, doing the due diligence to, to know whether they're innocent or guilty. But that's the thing about our system and how broken it is. They don't care no. if you are innocent or if you are guilty. All they care about is what is in it for them. And if they can bury you and get move f forward in their career and, their and, 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 and push their agenda forward, that's all they care about. Yeah. So this, our system is not fair. Our system has never been fair. And the, like, I'm sorry, but like the most fucked up thing about it is, is it has targeted the African American community, the largest. Yeah. And it's so messed up because there's, there's so many people that are being killed by people with a badge, by like people in positions of power that don't deserve it. And there's people that are locked up in jail that do not deserve it. You're They're, so right though. Yeah. There are groups of people who have been targeted and who, and no, we don't know what it feels like. We still, even when we don't, we don't get how certain groups of people feel. Definitely not. We don't like, yeah. we have been blessed to not have to, 
feel those feelings. And I have friends who are black. I do. Like some of, you know, so does mom, like some of mom's, one of mom's best friends is. And she and I just had a conversation a few weeks ago of talking about how she feels when it comes to the system and how much hurt and anger it has brought on her and her family. And, but we don't know that because we've never had to we've never, look we, at, we haven't been targeted no, up until, yeah. up until recently. Yeah. And it's also though a different targeting, you know, mm -hmm. we're not being killed. We're not, you know, so there are things that we still are ignorant to. So it's not, we're not getting on this podcast saying, Hey, we get how you feel. No, definitely Cause not. Because we don't. But All we also, can do is share our story from our perspective, from the things that we have gone through and are continuing to go through. And we can see the brokenness. We can see like the injustice that's happening on so many levels from our situation to the Balenciaga thing to tons of stuff. And it's just, it gets to a point to where who's going to stand up and do something? Yeah. Somebody, something has to be done. Mm-hmm. And it's not, and that's the hard part is like, there are so many people in this world that I feel like want goodness, that want to see success and love and compassion. But then there's also people who just want division. And because the, if, they, if you can divide people, you can control people. Yeah. If you can divide people, you can control people. I love that. And if we would all just come together and try to understand where someone is coming from, it would be a much better place. For sure. And that's why it's like I said, I'm the first to say that I've been so ignorant to situations and so tone deaf to situations at times, but you don't know until you experience it yourself sometimes. And you don't, and that's just, how it is yeah and and obviously like there the, the just the power like the kind of like the i'm trying to figure out how to say this like the the media yeah the media the media, the media, controls. media controls the narrative mm -hmm. so and the thing about it is the people that are behind these massive companies are they are the ones that control the narrative. They get to say yeah. it, whatever they say is is what's going to happen, and it's so messed up because like just the other just yesterday, I was look I was on my Instagram. I was looking at like my stories and stuff, and I was like my story views were are like three four hundred thousand people, and then the moment that I post something about prayer or about don't forget to pray every day or, or repost something like that, yeah. immediately my they shadow ban it. Yeah, I think honestly, like you can't talk about your religion. What you, I mean, you can, yeah. but you can't. You can't reach the masses on the level that if you you can't reach the masses on a level that you normally would if they don't approve of what you're putting out. Yeah, which is not the world that we live in. The United States, America, the United States of America, to where we should be able to have freedom of speech and freedom of religion. And this is the greatest country in the world to where people come to live the American dream and people. And I feel like right now, so many people feel that the American dream is stifled and it has. that's the sad part. And like I said, I'm not looking to get political. I'm looking to say how I feel and just because I feel a certain way doesn't mean that it's right. Doesn't mean that it works for everyone. It's just how I feel. Mm -hmm. And I hope that we can get to a place to where we can show more love and compassion. Because if this whole thing with mom and dad has taught me anything, it's taught me what a lack of compassion there is and what a lack of understanding there is. Mm -hmm. And people just look to hate and they want to see our downfall. And I'm going to try to take that and make a difference with it and, mm -hmm. you know, try to be better. 
and that's all that we can do. And yeah. the goal is to create is to make an impact on the world, obviously leave it in a better condition than when we got it. But I want to it, and listen, you one person can only do so much, but I mean, I want to be able to show my kids the right way to live, the morally right way to live. And if I can do something that to leave because to leave them a better world, yeah. then I'm going to do it. Mm -hmm. And that's just right and wrong. Speaking up when something's right, speaking up when something's wrong. And a lot of people do not want to speak up and say, no, that's wrong because everybody else has jumped on the bandwagon. Yeah. Of and the fear of rejection, the fear of... You got to get past that. Yeah, I know. You got to yeah, get past you gotta, that. You got to get past that. Yeah. But I just, I don't know. I feel like I love our conversation today too, how nothing has been, like we said, nothing's planned, nothing. It just kind of goes with the flow. Mm -hmm. And for one of the first times, like you've actually opened up. About, it is the first time. Yeah, the first time. Yeah. Also, too, though, your life and how it once was versus where it is now. And I think it just goes to show that just because, like you said, there were times that like the way you, we all know you're not a bad person at mm -hmm. all. Like I say, you've got the kindest heart out of like anyone that I know. And I wish there were times to where I could be like have that softer heart and you will you because you're not you need I mean, to have a tougher heart at times but <laughs> no i mean you you'll get to that i mean you just have to go like i said like i had to go through shit in order to get to the place that i'm at now i had to find emmy i had to go, grow closer to god i had to stop going to god for what i need and and just or for what you thought or for you what needed. i thought i needed for i stopped going to god for what i wanted yeah. And instead, oh, just actually had a conversation with God about what does he want from me and what do I need that is from him? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I mean, you know, like I was angry. I didn't want to listen to anybody. I knew better than everybody else. And that was it. But now, I mean, it's like the older I get, I'm realizing the less I know. <laughs> Yeah. The less I know, that but, the, but sure. the older I get, the more I want to learn. So if, as long as I can continue to do that and continue to become a better person, learn more, talk less, I'm going to be all right. And Something you will came too. over you today. No, Samantha, this has, been, <laughs> this has been here. You just, you just ignored it. <laughs> You're too busy being pissed off, punching walls. Okay. I don't metaphorically speaking. Yes. Metaphorically speaking, when it comes to showing up for each other, we haven't I mean you know that I'm I've, I'm there for you and I know that you're there for me. But there's a difference in someone knowing like okay that person I know that person's there for me but that's I know that person's there for me if I call on them. Yeah, but there's we're talking personal. We're talking like personal me and you. How do you think, do you think? No, th I get, that's what yeah. I'm saying. It's like, I know you're there for me if I call on you. But, hang on. But ha can, do you, if you go back and look at our text, can you not say, I do, I reach out to you. I'm like, hey, good morning. How are you? And sometimes, I, most of the time, I don't even get a response back. There have been times, it's like, goes through ebbs and flows for sure to where like you've checked on me. Mm -hmm. but there's also times that I'm just like, whatever, I'm let her do her thing. I'm not dealing with that. Yeah. But cause I feel like, like we said, you are like, I'm not going to live in this constant state of negativity I'm anymore not. for me. I'm like, well, this is our life. This is the negativity. And, but also too, like you're engaged, you're trying to figure out your life. Mm hmm. I'm not at that place. And that's so okay. It, but it's very different. And we're very different on how we communicate, which is really hard mm -hmm. because. Well, I just, I feel like, and this is not, I'm not taking a jab at no. you by any means. I, but I just feel like I let go of my anger. Most of it. I mean, there's still a little bit there, but I mean, I like, I've, like I've let go of it because I've realized that. I can't, I can't, you can't do, I cannot do anything. You cannot control anger. 
I mean, it, it'll, it, it'll, you might think you can, then it'll boil up, boil up, boil up. And that's when you start taking things out on the people that you love. Yeah. Like, and, and I get that, but I also, because we're so different. We're different, but we're not that different. No. in our communication styles, I think, I don't know. I'm just harsher. Like I just have a. It's because you've got that, you've got a wall up. I've got a wall up, but obviously like we know why that is. Mm -hmm. We know things yeah. that no one else does. So because of that, I'm just like, there is a hardness that I have to figure out how to soften. And in a world like what we live in, it's hard to allow yourself to become softer because the softer you become, the more well, there, people there, can hurt you. This whole this whole narrative that people that is out in the whole in the world that to in order to make it and in order to succeed you you have to be hard yeah and you don't like at the end of the day having compassion knowing that everybody's going through shit mm -hmm. and the way that you talk to somebody could very well be your last time speaking to them. Yeah. Which is what I have learned. That's what I, I have tried to do better. You need on. to remember that more when you talk to me. Well, Savannah, <laughs> it's easy whenever I see the horns coming up out of the top of your head. Yeah. But I really don't even, I don't even argue with you anymore. I just like, whatever, do your thing. I'm out. I just don't talk. And, but I don't want to do that. But I think, and again, like everybody, you have to grieve. Like you said, you have to grieve on your own time. Yeah. You got to work through everything that you're going through by yourself personally, as well as like everything's going on with our family. You got to work through that and you got to work that on your time and that's fine. But if you just, it's okay not to have it figured out. It's yeah. okay not to have cuz once you real once you get to the that point you're going to realize that you don't have control over anything. No, you don't. Only and I thing think you have control over is what you do and what you say and how you say it. That's it. Yeah, and I think I've been so fixated on perfection. That's in, that's impossible. I it is it's very impossible, it's, it's, which you is you cannot achieve perfection. It's no, unachievable. It it is, but that's also too where a lot of the depression and a lot of the anxiety comes from because I have like I had a brain scan done and it, it literally showed my brain in a constant state of switching back and forth between anxiety and depression, but constant, and that comes from trauma. trauma. It comes from our surroundings like you're a product of what you come from you and constantly feeling like i don't want to disappoint people and when you're in that mentality that's what that's what you've got to let go you got to get up every morning and not want to disappoint yourself yes forget what everybody else says forget me forget mom forget dad forget everybody else you need to get up in the morning and just focus on not letting you down not disappointing you that because that's all you your anybody else's opinion of you is none of your business yeah and i know it's so much easier though it's said easier said than done than done and that's kind of and you gotta do it small t a little bit at a time yeah and i think that's the part that i'm at in my life right now is like trying to recreate not even recreate myself but find myself and who i am and i'm going from one extreme to the other and i've said things like i said on this podcast that you know i've had to apologize for and that i could have said differently and i could have watched my tone of voice whatever it may be hey, your tone's what gets you in trouble <laughs> Cause I'm like, hey Savannah, what's up? Nothing. What's up? What do you need? Well, so no, I, I don't need shit. I'm just seeing how you doing. Well, you know, when you get so wrapped up in the day to day task, you don't take a second to breathe and figure out what's important. And I think that's where I'm at right now. Is like figuring out what's important, figuring out what's important, and also figuring out who I am for myself, so that I can make a positive impact. Mm -hmm. But I think, it I don't costs know. No, it, it, it's, it costs nothing to be kind. I know, I know. It costs know. nothing to be kind. Tell it to them. They pro <laughs> they already know this. We talk, I'm talking to you. <laughs> no, but, they do not. Some of these people do not. Well, it costs nothing to be kind. And like I used to be, and still have that mean, uh -huh. I, I have that, that mean SOB inside me. Uh -huh. And I can, 
I can go from zero to death row very, very quick. <laughs> but with that being said, I, what I've learned is that like com being compassionate and honestly, I've learned it all from Emmy. I mean, I have, if you're compassionate and if, if you work on your delivery and with how you talk to people, you can control a conversation just by the way you start it with your delivery. 100%. And you control conversations with your delivery, and that's why I pull out of the driveway and don't talk to you. But I mean, there's always room for growth, there's room for improvement, and you're you're gonna get there. I won't get there. I think going forward, where we have to be better is with our communication. Of instead of for me, instead mm -hmm. of acting out or my tone of voice being elevated or bitchy. Because that's how, really, that's my cry for help. That's that's what it is. Mm -hmm. And so, instead well, I of need that, to know what I need to do in order to help you get past that and grow from it. Yeah, and I think that's the thing is we have to be more open with each other on like, hey, this is what I need. Mm -hmm. Instead of, you know, trying. you need to know that you're you're not by yourself. You're not alone. You don't have to do any of this by yourself. Yeah. Whatever happens with mom and dad is in God's hands, but you don't have to go through it by yourself. You don't have to carry responsibilities by yourself. You don't have to, to do all of this stuff that you have put on yourself and think that you have to get it all done alone. You don't. Yeah. Like that's what a family is. That's what I'm here for is to help you and help me and help everybody in our family. You're not alone. And you do take that. You you want to well, I do it alone, I but want, you don't. Not that I want to do it alone. I just, there are certain things that I know, like this is how dad would want it done. This is how. Mm -hmm. And so in my mind, I'm like, all right, I just want to do it. And it's where I'm at in every you phase can't of life. Live, you cannot live your the rest of your life trying to please our father. And that is something that you have done your entire life. And your life cannot start until you start trying to please you. Yeah. I know that. And it's not, I think it's just not. I think because he's always been there for us and he's always, he's a great father. Yeah. He's been an amazing father that it's like, all right, like I want, there's nothing I want to do to let him down. And that's not realistic. That's not human. That's we're all going to let someone down. Remember that though. Don't just say it. You have to take that and apply it every day, but just know whatever you need. I got you. I love you. And I got you. And we need to, I commit to you today that I am going to make things less of a competition and more of... Because you're competing with yourself. I'm not trying to compete with you. No, that's a lie. That's that not. Is, that is it's a lie. It's not a lie. I, I promise you I've never done something. I've never like, oh, I'm going to go compete with Savannah. I don't... I don't... Ha I don't... I'm competing with me. You say that, but you know... There have been moments to where it's, there has, there's all, there's always going to be a level of competition. There has. I, but I mean, there, and there can be, but I mean, I just like, I don't wake up in the morning. I'm like, let me beat Savannah. No, like, I'm not no. saying that's how it is, but you get what I'm saying. Like there's, there's going to be more of. You and whenever you're killing it, it does, it makes me want to. Be like, I'm like, all right, Chase, get on your shit. You need to get, step up. You need to like get up and get shit done. That's the way I, I yeah. view it. Like it's not, it's not competition. It's more of inspiration than it is, than it is competition for me at least. Yeah. No, I like the way you put that. And I think a lot of that, your viewpoint comes from having more security within yourself you know, yeah, you but can I didn't know I didn't have it. I always have it like that. And just, it's just life. You just got to go through it, but you don't have to go through it alone. You don't have to carry all these burdens by yourself. Cause I can carry them with you. And it's that simple. I love you. I love and I you. appreciate and you coming on my podcast. Well, thank you for finally having me. <laughs> and just for the record, Savannah said, well, you don't really have any depth. <laughs> this shows you she didn't know me. This is the first time that Chase has actually shown some depth. He's never wanted to go into his story. He's never wanted to 
Yeah, because it's I think it's 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 my story. So I I I will share that when Okay, well, you know what? You know? I was wrong. Chase actually showed some depth today. And anyone Can we can we all clap right now? <laughs> Savannah just said she was wrong and we got it on camera. I was wrong. Chase showed some depth. And I know I and it's not I just wanted him to show what I knew was there. That was the only thing. That's why I hesitated and held off. And there's the Todd coming out. <laughs> Shut up. I love you. Thank you for having me finally. Thank you. I love you. Okay.